Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us in tonight's live player Q&A with uh, men's national team and York and IFC's Michael Petrassel. Michael, thank you for uh, being here today. No problem. Uh, thank you for having me. Today's discussion is going to be uh, a bit differently than normal, uh, as Michael will only be taking questions from the audience in this 30-minute session. So feel free to write your questions in the bottom left question box, and he'll do his best to get to all of your questions. As uh, you're typing your questions, uh, I'd like to give you a quick background on Michael's playing days before getting started. Michael started playing soccer in Woodbridge at the age of uh, four years old. And at the age of 15, he left DFC Academy to enter Queen's Park Rangers youth system and made it all the way up to the first team in England's Football League Championship division. Michael also played in the MLS with the Montreal Impact and is now playing for York Nines uh, York 9 in the CPL, which just started phase one of, of its return to on-field training this week. So congrats on that, Michael. Uh, Michael also represents us uh, in the Canadian men's national team, and he hopes to uh, be part of the 2026 World Cup squad as well. So we wish him all the best in achieving that goal. Again, Michael, thank you for being here. We really appreci appreciate you taking the time to, to answer our athletes' questions today. Um, feel free to get started whenever you're ready questions are in the uh, in the chat box all right sounds good and thanks for having me guys um okay well i guess we'll start with the the first question that is in there um is who is the best player you played with and the best player you played against in the pros um so i'd probably say the best player i've played with was probably at um was was at qpr and um I'm not sure if you guys would know him. Um, he's uh, a striker, Loic Remy. Played for Chelsea. Played for a lot of different clubs in Europe. And um, obviously, he's a kind of a big game player. And um, you know, growing through the system, I just got into the first team. I started training with them, and he was kind of our main player. And I remember, you know, he had a lot of excitement around him, and he's actually a very good player. So I think that's probably one of the better players that I played with. I've actually played with quite a few good players, but. I'm just thinking about it off the top of my head. I think he was one of the best. And the best player I played against in the pros, I would say, is probably Luis Suarez. I got to play against him when I was on loan for Oldham in England, and we played against Liverpool at Anfield in the FA Cup. And uh, I got to play against him, and I actually got to switch shirts with him after the game. So, um, yeah, like, I think, uh, obviously, I'm pretty sure all you kids know who Luis Suarez is, so... And if you haven't watched the Barcelona documentary on Netflix, is a good look into who he is as a person too. And uh, I think he's probably the best player I've ever played against. And just a memory that will always go down with me forever. So, yeah. yeah. That's the first question. And yeah. feel free to type any questions in there as I only see another one coming in. Um, best memory of being a Canadian national team player. Um, let's see. I went to, in 2017, I went to the Gold Cup. And uh, if you guys don't know, the Gold Cup is uh, it's a tournament that the national team plays in every two years. And it's kind of one of our main tournaments in CONCACAF. And uh, I got actually lucky to get the opportunity to even go. I got called up last minute and, um, you know, like I think the team was already made and someone got injured and they called me in and I think it took me a week in training to earn myself a starting spot. So I think, you know, it's just one of those things where, um, you know, like I felt like, you know, like I wasn't really part of the team at the time and kind of earned my way in. And then I ended up starting and I played all four games and we basically traveled the U.S. and we played against teams like Costa Rica, Honduras. And we made it all the way to the quarterfinals. And it was kind of one of the changing moments. And like, you know, our national team hasn't been very good for many years. And it's kind of starting to change. And that was the starting point. And I'm very fortunate enough to get the chance to play in it. So, um, yeah, I think that's one of the, the better memories uh, that I've had going away with the national team. All right, guys, don't be shy. You can type in a question.
What is my favorite part about being a professional athlete? Um, I think my, my favorite part about being a professional athlete, and I think, I know I speak on a, for a lot of soccer players, is um, I think like my, I love playing games. I love playing in front of, like, I think it's one of the, one of the better experiences that you'll get in life when you kids grow up and you get the chance to play professional soccer and uh, I think it's playing in front of fans and just that moment I remember my first game when I walked out and I played in front of 20,000 people and it's just kind of like it's all of like a thrill it's kind of like you watch it on the movies and you watch it on tv and then you're just sitting there and you're watching all these people watch you play I just think it's a blessing and I think another good thing about being an athlete and as um, I like training just with my friends I feel like as a job wise it's kind of those things where you wake up in the morning and I train two hours with so you make some of your best friends playing the sport, soccer, and I get to see them every day. And, you know, we always have gossip going on in the locker room and we're always talking and hanging out. And I think, you know, being active and training every day is something that, um, something you should inspire to do. I think as a job wise and growing up, you know, it's something I think every kid, especially playing soccer dreams to do. And I think it's one of the best things about being an athlete. Oh, I see some, all right. Um, okay, another question from Andrew. Was it hard being away from your teammates during this pandemic period? Sorry, what did you what did you do to stay connected? Uh, yeah, it was hard, especially because I just joined my uh, my team recently, uh, York Nine, and um, you know we had a month together before um, we obviously had to quarantine at home. And uh, I have a couple of really good friends on the team that we've been connected with like throughout obviously we played together when we were young and you know we just got back together and I think it's it was hard I think I didn't see anybody for a long time up to two and a half months until we started uh today and I just think that you know um it was difficult I guess uh you know it's a bit lonely staying at home and I'm sure uh, a lot of people feel it and I'm lucky enough to have a, little, uh, a younger brother that I got to kick the ball around with in the backyard but um yeah you know I think it was very difficult not to see my friends and I'm sure you guys felt the same and you know it's just kind of one of those things where you need to keep trying to do stuff and I play a lot of video games so play a lot of Call of Duty if any of you guys play Call of Duty so I that's how we kind of stay connected we kind of formed a little group and we uh always play together Warzone I don't know if you guys have been playing that but uh yeah so that's how we kind of stay connected and it's good to obviously talk on uh, the mic and you know just stay in touch and obviously having friends to talk to gets you through a tough time. Uh, okay, another question here. Um, hi, Michael. How many hours of training did it take you a day at my age to get where you are to? Uh, okay, well, I don't know your age, but uh, oh, 11 years old. There you go. It's right underneath. Um, sorry, uh, 11 years old. And if I'm trying to look back, uh, I think um, 11 years old, I think amount of, amount of days, I think I was training up to probably say about five times a week, I would say. And uh, I just remember like being a kid, like even now, like I'd look back at it and I probably could have done a little bit more. I think it's really important at a young age is of course to uh, to work on things that like you don't realize that are important then, but will be important when you get older, like working on both feet, you know, working on your, your abilities, especially at a young age, like your control and your skills with the ball. Those are really important because as you get older, the game will get much faster. And those are the things that you're supposed to learn when you're young so that you can just quickly, you know, move forward as the age, like as you get older and as the level of soccer kind of keeps growing and growing. And uh, I think, yeah, I trained about five, five to six times a week. And obviously playing games is really important too. And obviously it's a bit hard now with everything going on, but I think, you know, staying active and, you know, working on the little things um, every day is kind of important. And I think, you know, a lot of professional soccer players that I know, kind of go at it every day. And I think now if I can go back to when I was 11 years old, you know, I would try to take maybe two hours out of my day, especially at a young age, especially if this is what you really want to do and kind of work on the little things that you need to work on, like your left foot and your right foot and stuff like that. And always keeping growing and growing and developing your skills because as you get older, the soccer game will get faster. And, you know, when you learn younger, it, it definitely help you in the long run. So you know, at your guys' age, I think uh, right now, you know, even if you take an hour out of your day and you work on the little things, I think it will really help you in the long run. And it might not seem like it now. It might just seem like, 
you know, like, you know, you already know what you're doing and stuff like that. But trust me, like the more you work on it, the better you get. And uh, as you grow up, you'll see that you'll stay ahead, just a little bit more ahead than other people. And that's how you kind of make it to the top level. I see someone plays Call of Duty <laughs> in the text and over there. Um, where has, and next question, sorry. Where has been your favorite place to travel and compete? Um, well, my favorite place I played was at QPR and it was in London, England. And I lived there for eight years. And I think it's one of the best cities in the world. And uh, if you guys know anything about English soccer, I think English soccer is kind of the one of the most competitive uh, leads in the world. And uh, I really enjoyed it there. I think, um, uh, yeah, all, as a city, London is beautiful. Like it's one of those cities where it's got a lot of culture and, you know, it's got a lot of, you know, a lot of things that you can do. And, you know, it's a huge city and uh, I love living in there. And um, maybe your parents would know a little bit more or you guys uh, know about London, but uh, London is... Uh, it's actually a really cool city and if you ever get a chance to go on vacation i would recommend and uh playing there i think like culture wise like i just think it was so competitive and the fans and everybody is very serious and it's one of those things where uh you go into there and soccer is more of like uh it's kind of like what they what you know it's like everything they do is about soccer there so like everything on the tv is about soccer you have sky sports showing soccer you have every game you can watch on soccer and you have always all the stadiums no matter what division you're playing in sold out and i just think it's one of those leads and countries where soccer is their main focus and yeah i think that's the best place i've played and competed in so next question how have you been staying in shape or connected to soccer during this quarantine um so for me staying in shape our, our team has been doing this thing called the nike run club app if you kids want to maybe download it um it just kind of tracks what you run so you put it in your pocket and you go outside and you go for a run and it tracks the kilometers and distance there's also several other apps you can use to do that but that's the team thing we've been doing and kind of get a challenge every day put from our coaching staff and we just have to complete it and they kind of are able to record like trying to see our scores on the thing and that is something that we've been doing every single day so we have a run almost every day and um and then we just have individual workouts. So we have like a program that we do for our body, like um, bridging and core and stuff like that. And then uh, for me, like I just kind of been working in the backyard with my brother just to keep my you know, foot on the ball. Cause uh, you know, I don't want to go two, two and a half months, three months without touching the soccer ball. So we do a lot of like little drills around the cones and things like that. Just, you know, just to keep that going. But that's basically how I've been trying to stay in shape and you know coming back now first two days has been a bit tough and I think it will be for everybody coming back after being in the house for so long um but yeah so I think that's how I stayed in shape and you know I've done a pretty good job at it because I'm obviously motivated for it so yeah so that'd be it um sorry going down on, the, on a scale of one to ten how hard was it to become a professional soccer player um if I'm being honest I would say it is pretty hard. Like I would say at a scale of one to 10, it's around nine, 10. I think soccer, well, soccer is one of those things where, you know, it's kind of like, there's a lot of good soccer players in the world and there's a lot of, um, a lot of opinions and a lot of people, you know, trying to make it professional. And you just got to remember that, like you guys are all playing the sport, you know, some playing it for fun, some playing it for, you know, dedication, they obviously want to become a professional soccer player. And I just think that, um, you know, you need to sometimes like, you know, look at yourself and you just kind of want to do a little bit extra, like the more X, the more you do, the more it will benefit you. You don't want to be the one slacking. You don't want to be the one behind. You always kind of want to be pushing yourself because you also got to remember there's all millions of other kids that want to do what you want to do. They want to play soccer for a living. They want to make it to the next level they want to you know play and and i just think that doing the little things and doing even extra like you know even if there's a training session in the morning you do it with your team and going for a run at night just the little thing that might get you ahead are the things that you need to really like focus on especially at a young age and obviously now with this whole canadian premier league if you guys have looked into it like especially in our region york nine and hamilton are the two teams based in ontario it's going to give a lot of output and a lot of opportunity for uh, kids growing up now to actually become a professional soccer player. And in the next five to 10 years, 
uh, this league will even grow even more. And that'll be around the ages where you guys are, uh, you know, coming to uh, like around 19, 20. And those are the really competitive ages of soccer. And I just think that, um, you know, this is going to be a big output and a big um, chance for Canadians to have a better chance of playing pro. And I just think those are things you guys should be motivated for. And obviously still opportunities to go to Europe and play there or the MLS are still opportunities. But I just think now Canada soccer is growing and you guys would be able to take advantage of it. If you just do the hard work now, when you get older, you'll see the benefits. All right. We'll go on to the next question. Um, go on. Sorry, I see I lost track. Hardest defender you played against, game or practice? Ooh. Hardest defender I played against. That's a tough one. Um, I'm trying to think here. Uh, hardest defender I played against. I would probably have to say... Um, Oh, I'm trying to remember, I played against a lot of defenders. Um, uh, probably in training, I'd probably say it'd have to be um, Nathan Manua. He used to play on my team at QPR. He now plays for Real Salt Lake in the MLS. He was our captain at QPR, and he's kind of a big, big guy, and he's very strong. And uh, I remember in training, I always tried to, like, if I went up against him, he kind of, you know, he'd always be faster or stronger than me, so it'd be hard for me to get around him, but... Yeah, and he's a very good pro, so he's kind of one of the better players I've played with as well. So I would say him. He would have to be um, one of the hardest players I've played against. Nathan Manua, if you didn't get the name. He plays now at Real Salt Lake, if you guys want to ever look him up. Um, let me go in down. What advice would you give to grassroots players to stay connected and motivated to soccer during this time? Um, some advice I would give would... Um, Obviously, just try to um, stay connected and motivated during soccer, for soccer this time. Like, I know it's hard. Like, obviously, like, you know, no one's really sure of when everybody will be able to start training and, you know, start playing like how it was um, before all this, um, like everything happened with uh, COVID-19. So I just think like, you know, um, to keep in touch, like obviously with your coaches and, um, you know, like you could do Zoom calls, uh, are things that you can do and even if the, the coaches are running sessions on Instagram you know everybody log on everybody um, you know participate in just like those things like that is how you stay connected and you know also doing things like that obviously puts your attention into the coach's eyes and you know they see you working hard they see you coming on and I think in times like this an hour out of your day isn't really much you know I think I'm bored half the day too even after I work out I'm still sitting there wondering what I'm going to do so um, I just think those are little things that you can do to stay connected. Um, if you have friends in the team, you know, maybe play Call of Duty with them, you know, obviously talk to them, um, you know, even uh, text or things like those. Uh, yeah, but I just think, you know, I think everybody should stay motivated. Like, you know, I think this thing right now, it's, it's hard for everybody in the world. So I just think, uh, you know, once soccer comes back to being outdoors uh, and everybody starts to play together, you know, you just don't want to, lose a year so try to make the most out of the tough times that are going on so when we do get the chance to go back out and everybody train together you know you're not behind you're kind of either in the same place or ahead and i just think um those are some things to, to look into during these times um favorite player growing up and why um favorite player growing up and why um my favorite player growing up uh, growing up, my favorite player was Wayne Rooney. i known this since I was a little kid, and why is a tough question. Um, I always liked Rooney, uh, especially because he was kind of a Man United legend, and you know, he's, oh, I had him as my MSN pitcher. I don't know if you guys know what MSN is, but that was a, a while back. Um, but yeah, uh, favorite player, I just think he's one of those players that, um, you know, he's always the one... You know, like he's the highlight of the team. Like he's scoring, he was scoring all the goals and he was just kind of like an inspiration. You know, he worked so hard and I always remember like seeing it on TV, they always say like, oh, Wayne Rooney works the hardest. This is why he's the best. This is why he's the best. And if you guys ever, I'm sure you guys seen Wayne Rooney and I actually got the chance to play against him in the MLS and I got to trade shirts with him. So obviously him being um, my childhood best player. And I remember after the game playing against him when he played for DC United, 
I ran up to him as fast as I could to take his shirt because I knew that was the shirt I wanted even before I started the game. But yeah, I think um, he was one of those players that always inspired me because he was always the hardest working. And uh, if you ever watch him play, you can see, and he's got this video on YouTube where he tracks all the way back and he slide tackles um, one of the players. And then he sends in an unbelievable ball in like the 94th minute right after that to score the goal. And I just think those are like, um, those are just like characteristics of him. And I think that's why he always inspired me so that he's probably my best. And then my recent favorite player is Eden Hazard. Well, he has been until his Real Madrid days, but at Chelsea, I think he was fantastic soccer player so those are players if you ever want to look up how they play or to my two favorite players um next question where did you go for your post-secondary education how did you manage balancing soccer in school so um school has always been important especially to my parents and uh to me i was always quite smart in school um so i was quite good at it and uh my parents always pushed me to study and I listened and even sometimes when I got lazy, you know, like your parents push you to be extra, you know, focused in it. And I think uh, it is important. I just think uh, everybody should finish school. Um, I went to high school of Bill Crothers. Um, if you guys know Bill Crothers. And um, so after I went to high school, I had the chance to go to college in the in UK just because I moved over there. So, and kind of um, when you go over to professional teams, they kind of put you in school as one of their main concern, like one of their main priorities, especially at a young age. So they signed me up to um, college in the in uh, UK and I had to do um, two years there. So yeah, I just think um, balancing school, obviously, you know, I think everybody, you know, doing homework is kind of the hardest part of school. I think everybody kind of enjoys attending school because you get to see your friends and you know, class is not too bad, but doing homework is hard. And my parents were always the ones pushing me. So, um, yeah, I just think school is very important. I think, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you might get lazy or you might get tired of uh, studying, but I just think it's important and, you know, do well in school because, um, you know, it takes you a long way in the long run. So, yeah, that would be my opinion. Um, how did you become a soccer player is the next question. Uh, how did I become a soccer player? Um, I kind of just played as I played for club teams like Woodbridge. And then I moved into um, TFC Academy and, you know, kind of just the more well I did, the more people seen and soccer is a game on exposure. So the more people that watch you play uh, kind of give you the opportunities to move up. And that's just kind of how it, it went for me. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to be a soccer player. Like even at your age, like, you know, soccer was the main sport I played. I also played hockey, but I ended up choosing soccer and it was my goal. And at the end of the day, it kind of worked out for me. So I just think, you know, you can make it happen if you really want it. And uh, that's what I did. And even now at 24, I still want to move up higher as I can. And that is my aim. So that's how I became a soccer player. Um, all right. Another question here. How do you bounce back? from a bad play or if the score shows you're behind during the game? Um, I think that's probably the hardest thing in sports is when you're losing or when you're having a bad game and you're making a lot of mistakes. And I've had many of those, sorry, in my time of playing. And I just think confidence is something that like when you're playing and you're confident, you can do things that you didn't think you could do. And like, it's just kind of the thing that kind of makes you become a better player and times get hard. Like I remember going on spells where I had three bad games in a row and I would go home and, you know, I'd be so disappointed and, or during the game, I make a mistake and then I get stuck in my head. And I just think it's, it's hard to get out of those moments, but like some tricks that I use is I kind of, you know, I, I do like, uh, I kind of just restart. Like, I just think to myself, okay, the next pass, I'm going to make it simple or the next shot. You know, I'm just going to try to place it or like just little things like that, just so I can get back into the group again to start moving forward and just kind of, um, yeah, just kind of working at the little things, especially in a game like mid game. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, to react to like you doing bad stuff. But I just think, you know, if you focus on your next pass, making it simple and making it clean, you know, just slowing down and then you can start getting into the groove again or little tricks you can use um to um you know to restart or another one i use which maybe uh 
might not help you guys, but you know, you, need, you never know. I could try. I always, uh, so let's say I make the first four or five passes and they're bad and it's 20 minutes in and kind of disappointing. I retie my laces. Like I untie them, sit down and retie them. Just kind of like a sign of restarting the game. And then I go back up with a different mentality saying like, okay, like I just restarted, forget about that. I'm going to, you know, do better now and then, you know, make the most of the rest of the game. So those are just little things. Um, any pre-game rituals? I do have a pre-game ritual, but I don't know. Um, so I didn't start this till I was a bit older, maybe like 20, 21. So I have a pack of sour Skittles that I always eat before the game. Um, so I bring it into the change room and I kind of chew on them as I do my pregame stretches. I always do pregame stretches and activation just to get my muscles going, uh, just because I don't want to get injured when I'm playing. So I do a little bit of those and I always have just a small pack of Skittles, just kind of give me a little bit of a sugar rush. I don't know if uh, you guys would be able to do that right now, but uh, yeah, so I just kind of do that. That's kind of one of my pregame rituals and it's kind of silly, but it's kind of maybe superstition as well that since I started it, you know, I kind of been playing so long so um yeah those are just one of the things that i do pre-game rituals uh while i activate and warm up properly so um who is your favorite coach to play under and why um my favorite coach to play under was probably neil warnock um he's a coach now at cardiff city um he would coach me at qpr and he was kind of the first manager that um kind of played me all the time for qpr so uh yeah he was my favorite he's kind of an old school kind of coach um you know he's very strict you know always um you know was very uh hard on us and I just think uh he liked me a lot and he was the one that gave me confidence and I was at a young age and he was the one that kind of pushed me to um yeah to to be better and he kind of gave me my first chance at QPR to play regularly and uh you know I appreciate him for that and I just think yeah he's probably one of my favorite coaches are the one that's in my mind uh the most so neil warnock if you guys ever want to look him up he's quite a big time coach so um next question if canada qualifies for world cup will you play for the national team of canada so the world cup is in the one we will host was in 2026 i think canada's trying to qualify for the 2022 one right now um will i play for them i hope so that is my goal i played for the national team nine times so i've had nine appearances for the first team um you know, the national team squad is one of those teams where you go in and out of it, depending on the level you're playing at and how good you're playing at the time. And I just think, you know, if I stick to it now and I kind of work hard, I have uh, quite a while to um, impress. And hopefully I can be, when the time comes, I can be healthy and, uh, you know, one of the better players uh, in Canada so I can get a selection again. You know, the way the national team works is, um that they picked the top 23 players in Canada at that current time and as you see there's a lot of big Canadian players now like Alfonso Davies who I played with and now I played for Bayern Munich and uh so those are big time players and that are playing for Canada and representing our country so uh you know if I'm doing good then hopefully um you know I can get another call so that is my uh that's my goal and I think it should be every kid's goal to play for our national team because it's one of the like most privileged things you can do in soccer so uh, yeah, so I'm hoping I can get back there and um, I can play when I'm 2026. We will hope so we actually will be in the World Cup, which is probably our better chance of qualifying. But yeah, so hopefully. Right. Okay, Michael, I just uh, sorry to cut in there. Um, the, the 30 minutes is, is, is past. It's flown by actually. But uh, I want to thank you again for, for your time here. Really appreciate you. Uh, you know, sharing your, your experiences, your advice with our athletes and, and truly being a great example to them. Uh, it, couldn't, it couldn't finish off on a better question. We really wish you the best uh, with York 9 this season and also with the men's national team helping us qualify for, for 2022 and, uh, and also ideally to, to still be playing at a high level at 2026 and, and maybe some of our older players would be, would be pushing you then at that point as well. So uh, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, please send my, my thanks to, to Jimmy, Nate, and, and Angus. You guys have been incredible. It's been a true pleasure partying with, uh, with York 9 these last two seasons. And um, I, I can tell you, and we also have a club experience set up. We can't wait to, to come and see you uh, playing at home, um, you know, in front of a, a, a proud crowd. So um, thank you so much again for your time. Thank you, guys. 
Have a great weekend, everyone. And, and again, thank you, Michael, and send all my best to, to Luca and the family, okay? I will. Thank you. Okay. Bye for now. Bye.